Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make this candy corn which was designed by me and it's so tiny! Look at this! He's so small. Well, he's as small as I can make him for a candy corn. I tried to go smaller. Um, actually, I could probably go a little smaller, but not the point. Anyways, here's the design. So I decided to make an updated candy corn design. I know I have a uh, candy corn already on my channel, but I thought that one was round and candy corn aren't actually round, so I thought I would remake it and make it a little better. Plus, I know I had an idea to make it this way. Um, so, yeah. Oh, we went blurry. There we go. So this candy corn will be getting a tutorial in a couple days. Um, I wanted to film it today, but because I worked, I just could I didn't have the time to film this today. So, in a couple days, that one should be coming out. And this guy was my original smaller candy corn, but then I was like, I bet I can go even smaller. So I did. And this guy's getting a tutorial just because I thought it was fun because he was such a small candy corn. Um, if you would want a tutorial for, I guess, the medium-sized one, let me know. But as of right now, I'm not planning to do him a tutorial. Maybe I can just give you guys the pattern or something if you guys really want that. Um, but yeah, so here's the two candy corn designs that we'll be getting a tutorial. Like I said, this one should be in a couple days. But for today, he's getting a tutorial and he's so small. I literally... I was debating which one to make a tutorial for, but I ended up deciding on this guy just because he's so tiny, and I really love tiny designs, so, yeah. So band-wise, he doesn't take up many bands at all. In total, he takes up 53 bands. Um, it's 22 orange, 20 yellow, and then 11 white, so, yeah. I also will have the pattern and the band count in the description in case you want to look at that more. I don't know. And, yeah. I don't have too much- oh, I do have one other thing to say about this design. So this design might be a little hard for beginners. Um, I've noticed that people struggle, especially beginners, more when the design is a little bit tighter. And this design is fairly tight because of how small it is. So if you want to make a candy corn, and this is one of my first one of your first design times making one of my designs. There we go, I almost mixed that up. Um, I recommend you make the bigger candy corn, it'll just be easier for you because it's much bigger. Um, but yeah. Tiny candy corn. Um, but if you've made a couple of my things, you should be fine. So, yeah. Anyways, I think that is it. So we will get started on this tutorial. Um, today I'm going to be using my double-ended hook. I just really like this hook. Um, you can use any hook you want. We only need one end of it. Um, I also have been getting some questions about where I got my hook. And it was a hook Rainbow Loom used to sell, but they stopped selling it. So that's what my hook is. Um, you're going to want something to mark your rows. Um, I'm going to be using a C-clip today, but you can use anything, paper clip, S-clip, whatever you have. Just something to mark where you start and end. If you want to put a face on it, you're going to want some beads for the face. I already know I'm going to get the question, what size are your beads? I think they're 2mm, I honestly don't know for sure. And then for my candy corn colors today, we're going to be using this, just the same candy corn colors. So, it's going to go in the exact same order. And yeah, I think that is it. So, we will get started. So, you know, this is actually my third time filming this. I've messed up twice already. It's just I'm not good. I, I'm not good at reading my own instructions that I messed up twice, so I had to restart, which is fun. But yeah. So, anyways, to start, we're gonna start by doubling a band on our hook, like that, and then we're gonna pull a band through everything on our hook, and put both ends back on our hook, and then. We're going to pull another band through everything on our hook, put both ends back on our hook, but this time we're going to push the back one over the front one. So what we're basically going to be doing right now is we're going to be putting four stitches in each of these loops. I like to do it so I put two on this side and then four and then the other two on this side, so that's what we're going to do right now. So we're going to go back into this chain. We're going to do the exact same thing pretty much. We're going to pull a band through just the chain, put both ends back on your hook, and then push the back one over the front one and then push the loop from last time over as well. And that, that thing we just did is basically what we're going to do the whole time. I don't even know what I'm saying. Um, yeah. <laughs> My brain's a little scatterbrained today. I was like, where was I going? Not important. Um, yeah. Anyways, we're going to be putting four stitches in this back cat band loop, so we'll do that. So you're going to pull the band through just the cat band. Both ends back on your hook. Back one over the front one. And then you put the loop from last time over as well. And we're just going to repeat that three more times. So... Mm. two and three so once you've put four loops in this back section we're gonna go and put two more loops on this side of the chain so we just do that 
two more stitches like that. So you should have done two stitches on this side, then we do the four, and then two stitches right here. And then once you've made sure you've done that, um, you can also just double check by counting around because you should have eight loops at this point. So you start by counting the one on your hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And once you've made sure you have eight loops, instead of going into the cap band, we're going to go into this first band here and we're going to pull our band through that loop, both ends back on our hook, back one over the front one. And then we'll push the loop from last time over as well. And our C-clip will be going on this one. Where did my C-clip go? Oh, it's right here. Like that. I don't know if that was confusing. I was trying to make sense, but I feel like I was confusing because I was confusing myself. Not important. I don't... I'm rambling a lot today. Anyways, now we're going to do a row of single stitches around this. So at the end of this row, you should still be at eight loops. But we're just basically going to be doing one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C-clip. So we're just going to be doing single stitches all the way around. I feel like I should have painted my nails spooky for this, but I did. I haven't painted my nails much recently. I've been so busy. But yeah, we're just doing single stitches all the way around until we get to the C-clip. I can't believe I've had to refilm this twice. I thought I was just going to sit down and do it in one take, and nope. I'm so scattered I don't even know why. But anyways, once you get back to the C-clip, you're going to make a stitch on the band that has the C-clip on it, and then you're going to take the C-clip off this loop and move it up onto the loop that's on your hook. Like that. And like I said, if you count around, we should still be at 8 loops, so if we count, we should be at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, and now we're going to switch to orange, and I just realized I forgot to do something. But it's an easy fix that I forgot to do. I just keep forgetting to do this. Um, but basically, this loop that has a C-clip on it should be orange. So we're going to undo this last stitch we did really quick. And we're going to just basically redo it in orange. And because we're switching colors, instead of just doing a single stitch, we're going to do a slip stitch. So we're going to pull it through everything on our hook. And then put the back one over the front one. And then we'll be putting our C-clip on this band. Okay, now we're ready to go. So we're gonna do two rows of single stitches in orange. So we're just gonna do two rows of single stitches in orange, like I said. So yeah, we're just putting one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C-clip. This design goes so quickly just because it's so small and I love it. Anyways, once you get to the back to the C-clip, you'll make a stitch on the band that has the C-clip on it, and you'll move it up. And that's one row of single stitches. But like I said, we have to do two, so we're going to do the exact same thing we just did again. If you count around right now, you should still be at eight loops, but I'm going to count after I finish the two rows. So, I'm just going to keep going. So, we just keep going around with single stitches. Almost all the way around. And then once we get back to the C-clip, once again, we'll just make a stitch on the band that has a C-clip on it. And we'll move the C-clip up. So like I said, after those two rows of single stitches, it should be looking something like this. And now we're just going to make sure that we have... Um, Eight loops still, so we'll just count around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And yeah, so this next row will be our last row in orange. Um, we're gonna do, we're gonna be decreasing every third, so we're gonna do two single stitches and then a decrease. And yeah. So this is the first single stitch, so the next one will be the second single stitch. So that's one, two, and then the next loop, which is the third loop, would be a decrease. So you grab the front part. It's really hard to show you, you decreasing because of how small we are, but you're going to grab the front 
part of one loop and then the back part of the next loop. You'll just make a stitch on that. Like that. So we'll do that exact same thing again. So we'll do two single stitches. So one, two, and then we'll do a decrease. So you grab the front part of one loop, the back part of the next loop. You just make a stitch. And then you should be at the C-clip, so you'll just make a stitch on the band that has a C-clip on it. And then you'll move the C-clip up on to this loop. So now if you count around, you should be at six loops. So we'll count. So we'll one, two, three, four, five, and six. And yeah, if you have six loops, then we're good. So now if you want to put stuffing in him, you probably don't have to because he's very small. But I'm going to put a tiny bit. You're going to want to do it right now because it only gets tighter from here. We probably should have done it before, but I always forget about this. I think I can squeeze it in. I'm sorry I'm not stuffing him on camera. He's just so tiny, it's hard. I'm just putting a little bit. I never put a lot of stuffing in him because I don't want him to be like overstretched. I just put like the slightest bit. The tiniest bit of stuffing. I think I actually overstuffed my other candy corn, but it's fine. He just needs a tiny bit more. There we go. So that should be good. I've also realized I've done it again because this um this one with the C-clip on it should be white, so we're gonna have to switch it to white. So just undo the last stitch. I don't know why I keep doing this. But undo the last stitch. And then get... Ooh, get a white band. And then pull the white band through everything on your hook. Put the back one over the front one. And we'll put the C-clip back. I always forget to when to switch colors. I don't know what is with me today. But like that. And now what we're going to do next is we're going to do another row of single stitches. So we're just going to do one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C-clip. And at the end of this row, you should still be at six loops. Okay. Believe it or not, we're very close to done already. But yeah, we're just going to do a row round of single stitches. The piece of cotton in the corner was annoying me. Okay. Let's do single stitches all the way around. And then once you get to the C-clip, you'll just make a stitch on the band that has a C-clip on it. And move it up. And like I said, you should still be at six loops, so if we count around, we should still be at six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now you're going to want to put a little bit more stuffing in if you think he needs more stuffing. I think he needs the tiniest bit. Like that. But now we're going to do the last row. And at this point you can actually take the C-clip out completely. Because we are going to be decreasing absolutely everything until it's closed. So every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease. So you just grab the front part of one loop, back part of the next loop, and make a stitch. And then once you have the very last decrease up on your hook, you're going to pull a band through everything on your hook, put the back one over the front one, and then pull tight. And then you'll just hide the tail in. And because we want it to be pointy, you don't want to pull the tail in like super harshly, but usually it should stay pointy. should stay pointy though. And there you go. So there is one other thing I do to this candy corn design just because I don't like how the bottom looks before I do this. So you're going to want to get two bands in the color of yellow. And basically you're going to want to tie this shut. So you, I go in usually, you see how there's like six stitches on this side and then two on this side. I go between that. Oop. Wasn't supposed to pull it through that far. But I pull it through. Then put the back one over the front one and pull tight. Or not super tight. Just kind of so it holds it together more. 
And then we'll do this again right here. So you're going to want to go see these end two. And then these two, you're going to go between those. And it'll just tie it. It just look, makes it look better. I don't know why. And I don't have to do this with a big guy. It's just a small one. Probably because of how tiny he is. I just don't like how big the loops are. And you just hide the tails. Like that. And that's it for this candy corn, pretty much. Uh, I'm going to do the face right now, just in case you want to know how to do the face. But otherwise, that is it. So, I forgot to get my beads beforehand. Let me get my beads. Okay, so if you're going to put a face on your candy corn, you're going to want to get your beads. And I have my beads. And you're going to want to get a piece of string or a piece of floss. I, I use dental floss just because for whatever reason it works best. But you're going to get your bead. You're going to put your bead on the piece of string or floss or whatever you have. Get an orange band. Put it on the string as well. And then you'll loop over and go back through the bead. And you just pull the bead onto that band. Like that. And we just do this for both the eyes. Both of the eyes. Like that. And then now we'll just tie them into our candy corn. So it doesn't really ma matter which side. Just pick whichever side you want to be the front. Tie your eyes in. Oh my god, I heard it. it snapped. Just pretend your band didn't snap, because mine did. <laughs> I'll fix the snap band after the tutorial. I just I hate when they snap. But you just tie them in like this, and then you'll hide the tails. And you would hide this tail too, but I'm going to leave it like this because i got to repair his eye because it snapped. And if you want to do cheeks, um, you just want to get a band and then whatever color you want the cheeks. I'll do purple for this guy. And I'll usually come right under the eye. There's like a horizontally stitch. But I'll just come wherever right under the eye. It's kind of hard to find a spot. But you'll just go wherever right under the eye. And you'll just put the back one over the front one. And you'll leave it kind of loose. Then you'll hide the tail. <laughs> this is really hard to do on the candy corn. I don't know why. Like that. And he has a cheek. And then you'll do this to the other side. Um, it's kind of hard to show you because I'm afraid the eye is going to pop off. Because the band broke. Has anyone else been having problems with the bands? I asked this on Instagram, but mine keeps snapping. I don't know what it is with the bucket from Michaels, but they snap so easy. But if his eye was attached, this guy would be looking great. But of course, his eye popped off. So, yeah. That is how you do a candy corn, with the face and everything. Um, if you want to do the mouth, I usually just glue it on with hot glue. I just think it looks better. But this guy also looks cute with just eyes and cheeks, so, you know... Do whatever you want. But I hope you like this tutorial. Uh, I know it was really quick, actually. 20 minutes. Probably my shortest tutorial. Well, we're not even at 20 minutes yet. But if you make one of these candy cores, definitely show it to me on Instagram. I would like to see how yours turn out and how you do the face. Because everyone kind of does their faces slightly different. I feel like I'm basically the only one who does my faces like this. Um, so subscribe if you want to see more tutorials from me. Or if you want to come back to see the big candy corn. Um, it should be out a couple days after this one. I just have to find... find find time to film between work. Hopefully I can film this Friday, but we'll see. Um, subscribe if you want to see more tutorials from me. I have a couple more Halloween designs coming out. I'm hoping to make a uh, couple things. I'm, I'm excited. Hopefully I can make it before Halloween, though. We're getting awfully close. Um, also, check out my Etsy store if you haven't already. I've been adding some extra stuff to Etsy, and I'm probably going to add some Halloween things. Maybe I'll send some extra candy, candy corns out as extras this year. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, I think that is it for this video. I hope your candy corn turned out okay, and I will see you in the next tutorial, probably. <laughs> Bye.